Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, Bruno here from Big Brother Canada Season 3 and also Season 5. Um, you know, I've been getting a lot of questions. You know, it is that time of year uh, where the auditions are going to start for uh, BB Can 7. So I'm getting a lot of questions about the show these days. People are asking all these kind of questions. So I figured I'd just uh, get you guys just to ask me directly any question you wanted. Uh, if it's game related, not game related, life related, whatever it is, uh, anything you wanted to ask me and I'd put it together in this video here. So I first, uh, I want to thank everybody that took the time uh, to ask uh, me a question. There was a lot of questions to go through, uh, but I didn't want to make this video, you know, an hour or two long. So I picked maybe 20, 25 questions, something like that, and I'll answer those. Um, again, thank you everybody for asking the questions. If it didn't make it through into this video, I'm sure I'll be doing another one of these very soon. And uh, maybe we can get some questions of yours on there. So anyway, that being said, guys, thanks again, and uh, let's get to it. Okay, so the first question I got was, if you could redo anything from your time on Big Brother, what would it be? Okay, that's a pretty good question. Um, you know, I would say I made a lot of mistakes in the game uh, where it came to s some of my uh, relationships. For me, I think on season three, I think one of the things that was really, really bad for my game was I let walls get built. Um, I'll, I'll use a perfect example. On season three with Kevin Martin, uh, we had zero relationship. And it's just, it's not good. When you're in a house, a social house, uh, it's a game, and, and the game is basically built on relationships, you have to be able to talk to everybody. You have to be able to find a connection with everybody just to keep your angles covered uh, week by week. And with Kevin, I, I didn't do that, you know, and Peely as well. Uh, they were the two people in season three that I didn't have a relationship with. Now, you fast forward a couple years, uh, I love Kevin, I love Peely. Uh, they're family to me, and uh, they're literally uh, one of my favorite people uh, to be around and talk to and everything. I play video games with Kevin all the time, we talk all the time. Um, but yeah, if there was anything I would change, I would definitely have to say it was letting that wall uh, be built in season three. Uh, with that side or those two people. Um, if you did watch season three and you watch season five, you know the difference uh, between our games. You know, season three, we didn't get along. Season five, Kevin and I were, you know, ride or dies. We were in it together. We were in it to win it. So, um, yeah, I just, I just wanted to, you know, it'd be interesting to see how season three would have played out if, you know, we had that bond uh, the first time around or if that wall wasn't there. So anyway, um, yeah, that's a thing. So anybody that's, you know, planning on auditioning in the future or playing in the future, don't let those walls get built. Tear them down before it happens. Okay, the next question is, who do you think is playing the best game in BB20? Okay, so there's actually a few answers to this. Um, you know, the obvious one is Tyler, you know, he is playing a pretty good game, but I will say, I think his game, uh, will crumble. I think he's going to get caught. He's going to get found out and it will crumble. He's doing very, very well. And he has been doing very, very well for the first three, four five weeks, whatever it's been. Um, but it will come to an end. I don't see him winning the show. Uh, I see someone like Scotty. I think he's doing fantastic. Yes, he's not getting a lot of airtime. You people might think, uh, you know, that's a weird answer, a crazy answer. But airtime doesn't necessarily mean you're doing good. A lot of times if you're getting a lot of airtime, it's because you're mixed up in the drama. You're the one manipulating people. And your game will get found out eventually, at least for the most part. Some people get away with it. For, but for the most part, people get found out when people start, you know, connecting the dots. And, you know, when they go to jury and they start, you know, sharing their stories. Because once you're in jury, um, you know, you're kind of like, whatever, I lost. Uh, this is what was going on and you could be doing it on purpose or maybe without even knowing but you could be screwing over somebody else's game someone you worked with or maybe someone you didn't work with but it's all up to you it's the information you know whatever you want to share and what you don't want to share um, I think once more and more people start going to jury I think Tyler's game is going to start getting figured out and I think he's going to get in a little bit of trouble but anyway, uh, he will get caught and he will lose, I, I, I believe anyway. Uh, but someone like Casey, someone like Scotty, uh, they're, not, they're not getting a lot of attention. And that's not a bad thing. I think it's a good thing because if you're not getting a lot of attention, that means there's not a lot of people aiming at you. Uh, you're not at the top of the hit list. You're kind of even in the middle, near the bottom of the hit list. So even if you're not doing anything, you're still surviving week after week after week. And that's the whole point of the game is to just survive week by week until you really need to tear it up. And I think uh, Casey's doing great. Um, 
she doesn't seem to have too many enemies and Scotty I think is doing great and uh, eventually the uh, the level six or the alliances are going to have to start kind of turning on each other and I think Scotty will be around uh, for when that happens and he'll be used it more as a number uh, than an enemy. Anyway, the, you know, obviously I don't know what's going to go on but that's the way I kind of perceive it and the way I see it. So who I think is playing the best game? Tyler uh, is doing amazing, such a great player. Uh, he deserves all the credit uh, that he's getting um, but again, I'd say Scotty. Uh, even JC is actually doing pretty well. I think he's uh, not being seen too much as a threat. And uh, I think he's doing okay too. But uh, I would say Scotty and Casey are probably my two running uh, players for playing the best right now. All right. So if you were selected for another season, would you have done better or not? Okay. So I think what he's asking, if I play on season one, two, four, or six, would I have done better than I did in season three and five? Um, that's really, really, really hard to say. It's very hard to say because I feel... Every season is so different, okay? So watching season four, I felt I would have smashed that season. I felt um, it was just the gameplay was kind of whatever. Uh, I felt as a season I could have really, really ran away with. But I'll tell you something. That being said, playing on season five, um, there were a lot of players that were emotional players and not so much uh, game players. And it's actually harder to play against emotional players. Um, and there was a lot of them. There was a lot of them that would rather play with their emotions or whatever than what was better for their game. And I feel that it's actually harder to play that way because you never know where they're at. I'll use Dylan as a perfect example. And he's a buddy of mine. Dylan is my boy. I love the guy. This is not a shot at all because he is my boy. Um, but you know, it's one of those players where one minute he likes you, one minute he does so you never know where he sits and where he stands and it's actually really hard to work with someone like that and to play against someone or with someone like that because at any moment they could turn on you where you know if you're more of a say a strategic player they're like okay I might not like you but I need you and I need you for my game um, you know yeah okay you could piss me off or hey you did something to me on week two I don't really like but I need you moving forward let's look past that and move forward. Those are the better players and easier players for me to play with. The smarter player, no, I don't want to. I don't want to say he's not a smart player, but the the players that will look past that emotion and play more for the game, I find it way easier to play with them because you know where they stand, and that is half the battle, just knowing where everybody stands. So the ones that you know are, aren't going to make the emotional move are easier to read and to play against. The ones that are wild and out there, and one minute they're your friend, and one minute they're not, and and oh yeah, if someone just says hey let's be in alliance, they're like sure why not and they'll jump sides like that those are the hard players to play against because you can't tell them too much because they can flip on you at any moment and they have all your information so you're trying to work with them and they're kind of working against you and they can use the information you give them against you very hard to play against those players so my original thought was that season four i would have just walked all over it because there wasn't a lot of game players um in that season uh, that I felt anyway there was a lot of, it was really good entertainment but I felt that the game level was just it was at a different spot I'm not going to say they were bad players I'm not that's not the way I am and I'm not saying that but it was just a different type of gameplay um it, there's a lot of entertainers on that show I'll say it like that so anyway um I, I originally thought I would have done really well in that season but actually in the opposite I think I wouldn't have done so well because it would be so hard to read people and it'd be so hard to know where you stand with people because people were just jumping ship you know they hate each other they're fighting next thing you know they're working together and it's hard to, to play like that um so to be honest I think and every and I'm going to say something too everybody that wins their season was made for that season season one Jillian you put her in season three maybe she's out week two week three week four you take sarah hanlon from season three she won season three maybe put her on season two she's out week one two three or four every person that wins their season was made for that season the cast was the perfect cast for them you even replace one person in that cast with somebody else it's a completely different season so um the pax brothers you put them in any other season maybe they win maybe they don't kevin same thing season three he makes it to week whatever season five he wins it it's just the way it goes uh, you know that's just the nature of the beast every season um, it's just it plays differently if you literally put one different person in there it's a completely different season season five you take Cindy out of there it's a completely different season so it just goes to show um, just how it all plays out would I do better in other seasons maybe would I do worse maybe maybe I go out week one uh, you know who knows uh, it just it's hard to tell to be honest but again I will say it's easier to play against strategic smart players as crazy as that sounds it's easier to play against a good player than it is a bad player because you can always tell where they are at least it's easier to read um, in between the lines and stuff like that 
if that answers your question. Next one, what was your favorite part of the BB Odyssey? Um, okay, so the, uh, for those that don't know, that was season five. We, our theme was like a spaceship or like a um, outer space season theme, whatever it was. Uh, my favorite part about it, I mean, coming back on stage the second time and just not being nervous. I actually I shouldn't even say I wasn't nervous. I was really, really nervous going on stage. I didn't show it, but I was, man, I was backstage sweating, man. I was backstage and it's weird because I was the only person and, you know, usually when you go on the show, um, a lot you don't know, but you all line up in the back uh, of your group. So I had, you know, if you have, if you come in in a group of five or a group of four, whatever it is, you're actually all lined up backstage with your headphones on, your head down, you have a handler in front of you, you got to stare either at the handler or on the floor. You're not supposed to look around, but everyone, of course, is looking around. This is your com competition on your left and on your right. So, of course, you're going to sneak around, sneak a peek, see what's going on. Um, anyway, so, uh, I went, so when I was there on season five and I was by myself backstage, I'm going, what, what's going on here, man? Like, this is, this is weird. Like, am I, am I the only one going back or is there only four of us going back? Is there coaches or whatever? So, um, you know, I had no idea. So I think my favorite, there's a bunch of favorite parts. I, I you know, there's a definitely a lot of moments, but going back on stage a second time, going back in that house, uh, but with a different perspective this time, like the first time I walked in, I was just so green to everything. I didn't know what to expect. This time it's like, okay, I'm going back in. I know what to expect in there and I'm preparing myself uh, for it. So I think that was a great moment just walking back in that house because, you know, so many people want to walk in it for the first time to be able to go back a second time. And anybody that's played will tell you they would love to go back. I mean, I'd say 90% of the people that have played would love to go back in that house and they would do anything anything to go back so just the fact that production called me and said hey we need you to come play again and I had that chance to step back in that house that's a moment I will never forget um but while in the house too, I think moments was like we had the Canada 150. Uh, we were all in the hot tub. We all got to see a video from our families. We had a nice fireworks show. That was amazing. Um, you know, there's a lot of moments like that. Um, you know, you really learn to appreciate it when it's all over. Uh, when you're in there, you know, people get they get complacent. They get very, you know, because there's a lot of downtime. There's not a lot to do. People complain a lot. But once you leave, and I kept telling people, you know, once that door closes behind you, you will give anything to go back in there. And it's true. And if you talk to those same people that were complaining to me how bored they were, or how much they suck, or they hated it, and this is jail, and you talk to them today, they'll tell you they'd give anything to go back in that house. And I, that's what I always try to tell people, um, you know, it's just when they do auditions or people are asking me, you know, for advice. And I say, the best thing is enjoy the time while you're there because you're one of the few people in the world that get to go into that house and experience that. And it's easy to forget while you're in there. But once you come out, you're just like, man, I would love to just run back into those doors, but you can't. So um, just enjoy the moment and stuff like that. But anyway, like I'm going to say before I get off track, my favorite thing is probably going back on stage a second time, going back in that house a second time, just knowing, uh, man, like here's round two. Uh, I can't wait to, to do this all over again. So that would probably my favorite for sure. So this question comes from my girl, Alex Willett from BBOTT. Uh, awesome girl we met at season five finale, I believe it was, after my second time playing. Uh, great girl, we keep in touch. Um, this question comes from her. What type of food reminds you of living in the Big Brother house? Okay, so this is funny because the second time I played, I was actually on slop for half the time I was in there. So even though it doesn't taste like oatmeal, nothing at all like oatmeal, I wish it tasted like oatmeal. I was on slop all the time. And so anytime I see oatmeal, it just reminds me of slop and I can't eat oatmeal to this day. I can't even look at it. It's really, really uh, too bad because I used to love oatmeal. But even though slop tastes nothing like it, I can't even look at it because I just, just the emotions come back of how gross uh, slop was. Like I said, on season five, I spent half the season. I think I was there for seven weeks uh, and I was three or three and a half weeks or something like that on slop, maybe even four weeks. I don't remember, but it was a long time. Uh, so to answer your question, oatmeal, anytime I see or smell oatmeal, it reminds me in a bad way of Big Brother Canada.
Who are your favorites on BB20? Okay, so my actual favorites, I'm going to say Tyler's doing great. I've, I've mentioned it before. I think Tyler's playing a great game. Uh, Brett, I'm loving Brett. The guy is amazing. He's hilarious. And I normally don't cheer for that kind of character, to be honest. I don't. I mean, I have nothing against them. I, I just It's one of those characters I just don't cheer for, don't cheer against. Just, eh, whatever happens, happens. But, man, he's funny. Uh, you know, even Last Eviction, the guy had, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but he was wearing that granny suit or whatever, that sweater he had to wear. He had cookies tucked into his sleeves and he was eating them. And it was very subtle that you couldn't you couldn't tell unless you screenshotted the 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 TV or whatever. And you can actually see the cookies in this guy's sleeve. Like, that's gold. Like this guy's gold. And his speeches are hilarious. The things he's doing are hilarious. Um, how he's kind of you know putting the spotlight on people, uh, making lies up. People are believing. Me. I love it. I think Brett is hilarious. Um, Preseason, I was cheering for Rachel. That was my girl. Um, but she's gone now. Uh, Brett is is hilarious. Love Brett. Tyler's doing good. I think Scotty's going to win or doing very, very well. Um, Angela. I'm kind of digging Angela too. Uh, there's a lot. I, I find I like a lot of the characters. Haley I'm liking too. Uh, pretty much all of them. I like all of them. But if I had to pick uh, one, I'm going to say Brett. Brett is the one. He's just, he's too funny. He, he's making me laugh. And I usually don't watch the show for that. I always watch it for the strategic parts and the gameplay. But I'm finding that I can't wait to see what Brett's going to do next. So that's kind of neat. Because uh, like I say, I don't watch it for that. But this season I am just because of him. So uh, I got to cheer for that guy just for that. Uh, that alone. All right, the next question. I take it you're more of a fan of the older Big Brothers than the newer ones. Uh, yeah, I am actually, except for this season. I find this season, BB20, uh, has been amazing. It's actually my favorite season in many, many, many years. Um, here's the thing. I find the older Big Brother, pre-social media, people came to play. People weren't too worried about being popular on social media or Instagram famous or whatever, they came to play because once the show ended, if they didn't collect that check, it was over. Now there's a social media presence. So there is a game after the game. So a lot of people come, they want to be really popular. So when they come out, they have all these followers and people worshiping them and loving them and getting free product and all this stuff where I find the older uh, game, the older players, they were there to play because there was no social media to fall back on and to go to after there was no instagram famous there was no twitter this or whatever uh stands and whatever you guys want to call it there was none of that it was more about the game where i find a lot of people go on the show uh today to be instagram famous and all that stuff and the show comes second which kind of sucks so that's why i like the older uh the older seasons because i found people were more open people more real people were more uh, they wanted to win because there was nothing to fall back on if they lost, like this is a free chance for 500,000. Today it's like, eh, I didn't win 500,000, but I'm gonna get free makeup for life or free products of this or whatever it is. I can fall back on this career. Um, so I find it's a little bit different. And I find it's just, yeah, it's not the same. I, I like the players of the past, uh, except for this season. I find this season very, 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 very good. Um, so yeah, definitely I'm a fan of the older seasons. Question, what was your favorite thing in the Big Brother house? Honestly, one of the most favorite, obviously, okay, first I want to start by saying winning competitions is amazing. It's such a rush. Um, I did throw a ton of them. I did throw a ton of competitions, but the ones that I tried on, obviously I won. And there was a few that I did lose when I was trying. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, I won every one I tried and everything I, I did and I lost. I'm not going to do that because that's not the truth. Um, but I will tell you, I did try to throw the majority of them. And, and the, for the most part, the ones I wanted to win, I did win. And um, winning competitions is just amazing. The vetoes, I love winning vetoes. Uh, obviously, the letters from home were amazing. Uh, but I tell you something, man. When you go in the backyard to see the competition for the first time, it's such a feeling that I can't explain because you have no idea. You hear them building this competition for three days or two days or whatever it is in the backyard, and it's this in anticipation. You're trying to think, well, what's this competition? Is it one where we got to run back and forth? Do we got to climb something? Is it an endurance one? Uh, do we got to throw something? Is it the one, how bad do you want it? Do you got to shave your head? Uh, whatever. And you have all this time to kind of like think about what this competition is. So when that gate finally opens and you see the competition it just blows your mind and they're so good these competitions are built so so well 
Um, so I love that. I also love when uh, uh, we see our costumes for the first time. So they usually lock the the rooms, and they lock us in the HOH room or whatever, and they put all the, the wardrobe in one of the bedrooms, and then when they call us, you know, whoever's playing in the competition, go into the, into the room to try on our costumes, just seeing the costumes, I know it sounds really weird, but you lose your mind because it's so, it's so cool. There's only six of these costumes made in the world, and you get to play in them, you have no idea, again, what you're getting yourself into, you look at these costumes, and you can start, oh, this is what this competition is gonna be, and then you go outside and it's completely different, but um, loved it. Love trying on the, co the costumes is one of the best things when you see them. Seeing the competition for the first time and playing the competitions. I just, I can't explain how amazing it is. This, these competitions are literally built for you. For the 16 people, 15 people, 6 people in that house. That competition is made for you guys. And there's nobody else in the world, in the world, playing these competitions. And it's just amazing to be able to play them and to be a part of it. And I just, I loved it. Awesome. So those are the things I really, really appreciated um, and never got old. Anytime that gate opened, never got old. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. So um, yeah, that's definitely something I love the most about that house. So this question comes from Maddie from season six, BB Can Six. And she said, how is life as a retired matchmaker? Uh, that is awesome. So if you guys don't know, my boy Bobby Halad from season three, my ride or die, um, and Maddie are, are dating now, and uh, Maddie from season six, they're dating now. Uh, I had a little bit to do with that, and uh, I'm very, very happy for them. They're so good for each other. Uh, they're so cute, it's kind of sickening, uh, but whatever. They're great for each other, and I'm so, so, so happy for the both of them. Um, Bob's a great man. Maddie's a great girl. And, it, you know, it's nice that she's in Ottawa, too. She lives where I'm from, so Bobby, Bobby comes down every couple weekends to visit. So I get more time with my boy, too. So it's great. So everybody wins. So uh, to answer your question, it's great. I'm happy for you guys. And, uh, yeah, let's see what happens in the future. All right, so here's a different... Uh, pace of uh, the question uh, best parenting advice now I'll tell you something you know I'm not the perfect parent either you know everybody makes mistakes but I will tell you if I have one thing to tell any parent or soon-to-be parent or whatever just be involved be very very involved with your kids it's very very important especially when they're at a young age my kids are five and three and uh, you know there's only so many years where they're gonna look up to you like this and really want you involved in their life so don't let it go by don't let it pass you by uh, definitely be involved like listen I, I work in construction I come home at night I'm tired I open that door they both run to the door they scream daddy they're happy they hug me and right away it's play mode and it doesn't matter how tired I am I don't show them I snap out of it I play with them till they go to bed and then I have my time so that's parenting that's life and that's my best advice to you is be involved with your kids don't let it slip by you because next thing you know they'll be in college university whatever enjoy them now while they're young Okay, my next question is, who would you cast in an all-star season and you being one of the men? Okay, so I'm in the cast. Okay, so me, if I'm already in there. Zach Olenek is probably the most underrated player, I will tell you right now. I've played, I played twice, and he is probably one of the scariest players to play against because he's so well uh like he's so well socially, just everybody loves him. Anybody that meets him loves him. The girls love him. The guys love him. Uh, he's such a com uh, competitor. He's such a smart person. He understands the game. He gets the game. Uh, so someone like Zach is just an absolute monster and so hard to play against um, when it comes to the game. I'm telling you firsthand, both times I played, Zach Olenek was probably the scariest player to play against. Um, very underrated. I'll tell you right now, very, very, very underrated. His edit didn't give him the credit he deserved. The guy was, I mean, he controlled, season three was the Zach Olenek show. Uh, he doesn't get enough credit for it, for sure. So I'd say, so there's me, there's Zach. You got to throw Emmett in there. Uh, Dimitri's a great competitor. You got to throw him in there. Um... Who else? Man, there's so many people you can go with. Kenny, uh, Godfrey. Man, the list goes on and on. There are so many. Kevin. Uh, who, I'm missing one guy. Let's go with, um, oh, John Party, Arlie, Adele. There's so many people to pick from. It'd be hard. Um, but I would say, okay, so me, Kevin, Godfrey, uh, Zach, uh, Emmett, Dimitri, um, Arlie, and Kenny that would be my eight 
And for females, uh, Sarah Hanlon, unbelievable social game. Sarah Hanlon played probably one of the best social games there are out there. Great, great, great social player. Uh, you got to throw Sarah in there. You got to throw Aika in there for entertainment. Uh, Neda was amazing. Neha, Neha was another great player. Went way too early. Such, such a good player. Uh, Jillian, just a beast. Oh man, there are so many. I think Canada, the the females in the Canada version, the Canadian version, I say it'd be hard to choose because there's just so many of them compared to the American one, to be honest. I think the, the female Canadian players are a lot better than the American ones. Just simply, I, I find they're more, they're, they come to play. I find they come to play where in the American one, a lot of them just, they come for the fame, the fame, the Instagram stuff, stuff like that, where I find the Canadian girls come to play. Uh, but yeah, there are tons of them to choose from. Um, so yeah, uh, for the females, I'd say, uh, Sarah Mumsy, great social player. Mumsy for sure. Sarah Mumsy. Let's go. Aika, Netta, um, uh, Kelsey, another one. Very good. Uh, Sabrina, you can't go wrong uh, with Sabrina. Just great TV. Uh, Jillian, uh, Liza, Liza is another one. Very, very good. So that would be my eight girls. I would say, uh, just quick off the top of my head. Um, those would be the eight people, uh, female and men, but, uh, I mean, that'd be a great cast, but that's off the top of my head. Maybe I'll write a different one in the, um, comments below when I think about it a little bit more. When did you find out that Bobby voted for you to be nominated on night one on BB can three? That's a really good question. And it's actually really funny because, okay. So some of you might not know, I don't know if you watch BB can three or not, but I'll do a quick backstory. Night one, we walk in with nothing. No bags, nothing, no furniture, nothing. Just the clothes on our back. I ended up, I actually walked in with a full suit. I'm talking a three-piece suit, um, dress shoes, whatever. And I had to stay in those clothes for like three days or whatever it was. Anyway, so we walk in and immediately, so we have maybe half an hour to talk to each other. Kind of like, hey, I'm Bruno, whatever. Everyone's kind of happy, excited, whatever, whatever. And then uh, Arissa calls us down to the family room and says, uh, okay, now you got to go in the diary room and everybody has to nominate two people to go on the block and the two people with the most votes are going to be nominated on night one. We don't even know each other. It's been uh, 30 minutes in the house. You don't even know anybody's names, nothing. So, um, so anyway, so I voted for Bobby and Peely, I believe are my two and Bobby voted for me and Peely or whoever it was. So the fact that I voted to put Bobby on the block night one, Bobby voted to put me on the block night one. We end up being boys ride or die. Like we were tight. Nothing was coming between us. I was never going to cut him. He was never going to cut me. We were literally going final two together, but night one, I don't know what it is. We just looked at each other and said, no, this guy's got to go. And he looked at me and he's like, no, this guy's got to go. So it's just weird how that works out. Our initial uh, view of each other was, no, 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 I, I, don't, I don't like this guy. And he's like, no, no, no. And then we end up being like the tight and still to this day, he is like my closest friend. So it's really funny how it all worked out. So to answer the question, when I found out, I don't know if he told me, I don't remember if he told me in the house or if he told me in jury, but, um, or we might have even joked. I think we joked about it inside the house where I said, yeah, you know what? Like, how did it happen? I, I told, I, you know, night one, I put you up and that's when he kind of came out and said, yeah, I kind of put you up too. And, uh, we just kind of laughed about it whatever. I mean, by that point we were so tight. I knew he wasn't going to turn on me. He knew I wasn't going to turn on him. So we just laughed about it and, uh, we left it at that. But it's just funny how that works is literally our first you know immediate um you know thought of each other was like no no no, i can't work with this guy i want this guy out and we almost put each other on the block night one and well fast forward you know two three years and we're best of friends so it's really funny how it all works but yeah so i think we found out it was probably like five or six weeks into the show and that's when we kind of just kind of laughed about it and told each other so my next question if you went back on big brother for a third time who would be in your dream alliance Okay, Dream Alliance. Okay, I'm going to say um, Zach Olenek, 100%. Uh, Bobby, 100%. Godfrey, 100%. One thing I got to tell you something, okay, is you got to have loyalty. If you can find people that are going to be loyal to you 100%, that is priceless in there because you know at any chance people are going to want to turn their back on you and get you out and if if it's between you and them they're always going to pick themselves that's just the nature of the beast and that's just the way it is when you have people that are 100 percent loyal for you or people that will literally kind of stand up for you i'm not talking about getting aggressive and yelling and and if someone yells at you i'm talking stand up for you where they're going to try to keep you safe off the block 
that's priceless. If you can find anybody like that, because you know, I'll tell you, nine out of 10 times when you're talking to the HOH and the HOH says, I'm going to put these two people up, people are going to be like, okay, as long as they don't hear their name, they're like, yeah, okay, it's cool. Even if it's in people in their own alliance, they're going to say, yeah, no, that's cool with me, as long as they don't hear their name. But when you get people that will fight for you and they'll be like, you know, try to convince the HOH to do something differently, that is priceless. And those are the people you need to play with. Uh, so loyalty, loyal players are who I would love to play with. Um, so my dream alliance, I would say uh, Zach, Bobby, Godfrey, Kevin, Netta, Neha. Oh man, that's, we're getting too big here. We're getting too big. Okay, let's let's cut it down. Let's go. Uh, let's let's keep it very small. I'm gonna say Zach, Kevin, Bobby, Godfrey. I'm gonna take all the people from season three. If us four, well, five including me, uh, could have stayed together, we would have done some damage uh, in that house. So I'll say those. That's my dream alliance right there. Um, those guys are gems. You got to cover all aspects when you're building an alliance. And I know it's gonna be easier said than done because when you're in there, you're not gonna be able to connect with everybody you want to. Uh, people you want to work with might already be in alliance with somebody else. So it's very easy to say, oh, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna work with you, 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 and you. Uh, no, it doesn't work that way. They gotta be good on the other end too they got to be loyal to you and not somebody else so it's it's easy when you're watching tv saying oh this is who i'd work with and eh, it's not that easy <coughs> so um you just making an alliance isn't as easy as you think and sometimes you got to work with what's given to you uh and sometimes you could be on the other end where you're kind of just dealing with the scraps of the people that were kind of left out of other alliances whatever it is you got to make it work but you got to try to get brains you got to try to get the bronze you know people that are good at puzzles people that are good at obstacle courses um people with you know good memory that can remember the days you got to cover all your angles it's very very important so i'll use a perfect example actually and, and here's the thing is is kevin is actually a really really uh good athlete i know it didn't come across like that i guess on on season five or even three but the guy's a very very good athlete very good at basketball and sports and all this stuff um but for me he was my brain in the house uh he'd be better at puzzles than i am and stuff like that where i felt i would carry us in the physical competitions and he could carry us in the mental competitions but the guy's a beast but like i'm saying just make sure you cover all your angles uh when you're trying to make an alliance again it's easier said than done um not everyone's going to want to work with you and that's just the reality of it but if you can get all angles covered uh you're going to be doing okay as long as everyone's trying to win um when it's their kind of turn to win, you'll be all right. How did Big Brother change your life? I kind of like this question. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty basic person to be very, very honest with you. Um, it changes my life in a way where, you know, now I can talk to you guys about stuff like this, you know, uh, share my experience. Uh, you know, people do stop you on the street and say what's up, stuff like that. And I'm a fan of the show, so I, I like talking about it. I don't mind talking about it, stuff like that. But how does it change your life? I can only speak for me. I'm very uh, down to earth and I don't have a big head about it all. And, um, you know, I, I have two young kids and a wife. So to realistically, I'm not out partying every night. I go to work, I come home, I play with my kids and then I'm tired and I go to bed. So it's not like I'm out partying every night or traveling here to do this and that. Nah, not really. I, I got I got to, you know, my, my family comes first. So how did it change your life? I think it just... Um, like I said, I get to meet a lot of cool people. I get to do things like this. What I'm going to tell, I'll tell you guys something. Okay. Big brother isn't going to make you rich. Maybe it will. Maybe it'll make you some money. Uh, you know, um, I guess I'll make you some money, but what it, what it's it, the way I try to explain it is it's like a stepping stone and it helps you if you want to get into something. For instance, I like YouTube. I want to get into YouTube. Uh, I want to start doing this more regularly. Um, and because, you know, you guys have watched me play and you've, you've followed me and, and all this stuff and you've seen the show and you're fans of the show that, you know, you guys will follow, uh, watch the videos or things like that that I post because you're a fan of the show. If I talk about the show, you'll watch these videos, things like that. So I think it helps you in that aspect is that if you want to go into YouTube or you want to do something in your life, you can use that. Um, it's kind of like a stepping stone. It's a little, it gives you a little step ahead if you want to get into things like this. So, but no, you're not going to be a millionaire off of it. Um, and things like that. But, you know, I'm thankful for everything that, that has come my way. And I'm thankful for the people that even like watching my videos and that comment and, and all that. So I love that. And I am thankful for it. And I'm a fan of the show too. That's what I want to tell you guys. I'm a fan of the show too. I get it. I understand. 
Uh, the difference is I got to play and experience it and, you know, and others haven't and I get to share my experience. That's the difference uh, of it all. And uh, again, it helps me to get these videos out and you guys will watch it hopefully and, and hopefully you guys enjoy it and, and, and just my view and, and my experiences of it all. Um, and you know what? Some of you guys might not even like it. Some of you guys might think I don't know what I'm talking about and that's fine too. Um, I'm just going to tell you. Uh, the way I see things and again everyone views it differently and I'm gonna tell you another thing is big bro when you're in the house too, big brother your perception is your reality when you're in that house if I think you're against me in my reality you're against me even if you're really not and you're trying to work with me but if in my mind I've made it up that you're against me that's my reality so it's just like here when I'm talking about my videos and and what I think and this it's my reality on how I see the show playing out or I felt while I was on the show and all that stuff it's my perspective which it could be completely different for somebody else and that's just the way it is so um and actually I'll take this moment now just to thank you guys even for watching these and all that stuff I, I really appreciate it and, and you know all the support and the shares and the likes and all that stuff I, I, I appreciate it because I do want to get into YouTube I do want to do more of this stuff and uh, without you guys you know uh, I don't I, you know I can't really go too far with it so I just want to take you I just want to take this moment to thank you guys uh, right now for sure thank you so much and I will be doing a lot more videos like this so anyway let's get on to the next question okay Bruno, what is the biggest thing you regret not doing in the Big Brother house? Oh man, I got so many regrets. I have so many mistakes I made. Both times, both times I played, I made a ton of mistakes. Okay, so where do you even want to start? Um, season 3, I, uh, again, that wall I built uh, with Kevin, I wish I never did that. I wish we connected uh, on Season 3. Um, I wish, you know... Another thing too is with Sarah Hannon, I wish we connected because I, I think we both had the same goal in mind. Um, we wanted to get out the same people. I just, we could not trust each other. And that was a big mistake. I think uh, there was one night she was in the have not room and I went in to talk. The talk didn't go very well. And um, I think it just kind of ruined everything right there. It was right before that twist was used on me. Uh, fair enough. They didn't trust me. That's the way it goes. And they took their shot and it hit and good for them. That's the way it goes. Uh, no hard feelings at all. Actually, and, and actually Sarah and I do get along very well um, outside of the house. We see each other in, in Niagara Falls or Barrie at the finales. We always have a drink together and just talk and just reminisce and everything. Uh, there's no problems at all between me and Sarah. And uh, I actually have a lot of respect for her. And I'm actually happy she won. Even though I did vote against her, I voted for Godfrey. Godfrey was my buddy. Uh, blah 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 but uh, good for her I'm glad she won uh, great um, great social player definitely uh, doesn't get the credit she deserves for that uh, for sure so that was um, that's one of the things I regret not doing is is patching that up with Sarah breaking that wall down with Kevin that's season three season five uh, you know what? There's a lot. There's a lot on season five. Uh, season five kind of started going downhill. Uh, obviously, Cindy didn't help the cause at all. Um, but whatever. That, that it's fine. That it's it's fine. Uh, that's not what it's about. Um, you know, I was on slop a lot on season five, and I felt that ruined my game as well. I I just wasn't there mentally, and uh, you know, when you're hungry, you don't want to talk to people. You don't want to you know you don't want to be around people. And I think slop destroyed my game. And where it all started was when I threw the first have not competition that's where it, it went downhill because i threw it uh because i wanted to sit in the have not room with cassandra uh with dimitri and i don't remember the other person william i believe it was i don't remember but anyway i wanted to be in the have not room with them so i could kind of connect with them and that's where it all went downhill because then the next week was backwards week i was on it again two weeks back to back and instead of building those bonds i didn't even want to talk to anybody so it really just it drained my energy and it just totally backfired and then I was on it again a week after and it just it was just bad it was just really hard to play uh when you just are hungry and you have no energy and, and I was getting dizzy by standing up and it was just anyway it was a, it was a bad 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 uh chain of events the whole Cindy with the Netta thing uh bad chain of events so what I regret on season five is throwing that have not challenge because that was the beginning of the end for me not knowing obviously at the time but that was the one for sure. How do you feel about the winner of season three? That's an easy question. I kind of touched upon that uh, in, another, in another question there. Uh, 
I love it. I think Sarah is a good winner. I think she deserved it. I think she played a really, really good social game. Um, her back was against the wall. Um, I know. I think she did great. I think she's a great person, and uh, she deserves it. I'll say it again. Every person that wins their season was made for that season. Um, again, you put her on season whatever four, three, two, whatever. Maybe she doesn't win. Maybe she does. Maybe she doesn't. But she was made for season three, and it wasn't an easy season. I'll tell you. There's a lot of people that knew the game very, very well. Well, uh, a lot of smart, smart, smart players, um, and a lot of like good competitors and everything. So you know, for her to win, uh, there was no joke. I mean, she did a really, really good job. So uh, how do I feel about it? I feel fantastic. Uh, no complaints at all. So good for her, and uh, you know, it's. I mean, obviously, I'd rather it be me, but uh, hey, it wasn't, and that's just the way it goes. And you know what? If I would have won season three, maybe I wouldn't have had the shot again to play in season five. Um, yeah, whatever. I didn't win either time, but to be able to go back in that house, hey, man, I won already. Um, that's big for me. I, I just just to be able to go back in that house is great. And uh, so, I, you know what? I can't complain. If I won season three, hey, I wouldn't have gone back for season five. So, um, you know what? We all win. Right. Uh, who was your best friend in the Big Brother house? Okay, so um, season three was Bobby and Godfrey. Those are my literally my ride or dies. Um, I was taking both of them to final two, just depending on who was left in the house with me because I knew the three of us would not make it to the end. So I was just kind of trying to see who was going to be left near the end with me, and that was my final two. Um, but I knew I would never, ever have to pick between the two, so that was good. And even if... Um, I did have to pick between the two, say we were in final three, I think it was pretty safe to say that they would have both taken me to the final, at least I know for sure Bobby would have, Godfrey, pretty sure he would have, but you never know, um, but anyway, so it's safe to say that I felt good either way, um, so those are my boys in season three, season five, definitely uh, Netta and Kevin, Kevin's my boy, and I just it drives me crazy to think how season three, we missed on all this like, you know, we were buddies, man. Kevin's my boy. Like, we're, I love the guy, man. He's literally like family to me. And we played an entire season together, even in jury. We didn't like each other. We literally did not like each other. After the game, we did not talk, man. We did not talk after BB Can 3. We weren't buddies uh, during the show. After the show, nothing, which is kind of weird to me because today he's a brother to me. I love the guy. I would do anything for the guy. Um, so it's just weird how that all plays out. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just weird. So best friends for sure. I mean, I got a lot of them. I love so many of them. Um, you know, I find seasons one, two, and three were probably the closest. Um, I don't know why. Just, I feel that way. Um, and the other seasons too, we're all close to, it's not nothing like that. Um, but anyway, Bobby, uh, I still see the guy every month. Uh, Godfrey, I see him pretty much every month, every couple months. Kevin, we play video games together all the time. Uh, at least every week we play something together. We talk all the time. Uh, they're all family to me. So yeah, those are all my, my best buddies for sure. And, uh, you know, it's, everyone gets along and it's pretty good. So anyway, guys, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, watching these videos, um, supporting the videos, for sharing them, for liking them, for leaving comments, all that stuff. If there's any questions you want to ask, I can make another video, leave them in the comments. Uh, just leave them down in the comments below and I'll get to them. I can make more of these videos if you guys want. If not, then Hey, I won't do them, whatever it is. Um, but I definitely want to keep this going between us and talking and I love doing this stuff. I really want to get into the YouTube uh, scene and everything. And, uh, I can't do it without you guys. So again, thank you so much for all the support and everything you've done. Um, so anyway, guys, uh, thanks again. Ask the questions below. Have a great night. Peace.